am the uh, department's equivalent of Beaker. Uh, there is the tall, perpetually stressed uh, ginger Muppet. <laughs> you know, who works for a kind of eccentric, unreasonable, um, unpredictable scientist, or as I call him, Dieter Vogt. <laughs> Professor of Industrial Chemistry and International Man of Mystery. <laughs> but what does Industrial Chemistry mean? It basically just means that my chemistry fails as much as everyone else's, but on a larger scale. <laughs> Especially what I work on is something called tandem catalysis, where I try to get um, one catalyst to do as many reactions as possible. Um, and so if we imagine Beaker being fired at a cannon, basically I'm being fired at a cannon while also juggling and eating fire at the same time, which would probably be easier than actually doing a PhD. Um, but I've been in the department uh, for like eight years now. Um, I did my undergrad here um, and love it. Um, I get on well with a lot of the staff, <laughs> well, most of the staff. I'm actually originally from Dundee. I mean, I was born in Edinburgh, but I grew up in Dundee. Um, and I love it, that's why I've not been back in eight years. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm happy to be here at Edinburgh. And, uh, and I thought, well, when I signed up for this, I thought I'd put that excellent Edinburgh um, chemistry training into practice. So it was at the end of the month, so I did nothing for a couple of weeks, then realized, hang on, it's next week. And um, so I had a bit of a panic, you know, a bit of a, like, you know, crying on the phone to mum. Had a cup of coffee and that. So for those of you who are maybe undergrads, there's a nice little garden by JCMB that is perfect to have breakdowns in. <laughs> <laughs> Went there, um, and I've come down, and, and okay, let's consult the literature. So I'm away to the George Square Library, um, that concrete toaster rack, um, our dear library as the Marxists call it, um, and uh, I have found myself a book. So here we go, it's, uh, it's called uh, Humour and Humanism in Chemistry. And, it was written in 1947, and it wasn't the classic joke book I was hoping for. <laughs> you know, I thought I'd have such zingers as, um, Doctor, Doctor, my friend is a chemist. Do you think you can heal him? <laughs> what is a comedian's favorite element? Ha ha hafnium, or he he helium. I'm getting a few R groans out there. And maybe by the end of this set, your uh, favourite element will be arsenic. Uh, <laughs> no classic chemistry. Joke. How many um, how many counts does it take to change a light uh, change a light bulb? Three. One to change the light bulb. The second to write the paper on changing the light bulb. The third to look at the paper and say, actually, this is a journal more about LEDs these days, and reject the paper. <laughs> <laughs> what did Donald Trump and the nucleus of a sodium atom have in common? Oh, actually, what's different between them? <laughs> the sodium has 11 positive charges, Donald Trump has 11 potential charges. <laughs> Instead, we get something weirder. We get the history of chemistry um, starting with the alchemists um, and going through to the modern day. But um, I love the alchemists. Um, you know, it's, it's the you know, great grandfathers of chemistry is where we came from. So uh, let's have a read and see, oh, story time, um, see <laughs> where, where did we come from? How have things changed? Right, so the alchemists are described as this. A strange and almost inhuman being, <laughs> aloof and abstracted, and wholly absorbed in activities incomprehensible to the common man. <laughs> oh, how far we've come! <laughs> All right, but you know, there's stuff to, to admire by the alchemists. They're the first people to look at the world around us and and try and understand how things are formed. Like, where did this stuff come from? And uh, my favorite passage is we're talking about the formation of of something called cinnabar. Now cinnabar is mercury sulfide, it's the, it's the ore of mercury. You heat up this red rock and out um, pours liquid metal mercury. And so these guys decided, well this is where it comes from. So, right, I'm gonna read. Right. 
So this mercury cinnabar, where does it come from? Elephants! <laughs> Stay with me. <laughs> Which rather surprisingly are made tame by drinking the juice of the barley. Oh, yeah, who isn't made tame by drinking juice of barley? <laughs> a continual war against dragons! <laughs> no, I think The Hobbit would have been a much better film if it was <laughs> elephants instead of dwarves. You know, Peter Jackson, you know, Oscar winner. Not me. Um, okay. <laughs> Which desire their blood because it is very cold. So elephants, cold-blooded, like uh, reptiles and Theresa May. <laughs> and therefore the dragon, lying awake as the elephant passeth by, windeth his tail, being of exceeding length, about the hind legs of the elephant, and so staying him, thrusteth his head into his trunk, and exhausteth his breath. Right, so the next time you're in your fight, what you need to do is like, you know, grab onto your opponent's face and just suck the, like, the breath out of him. I actually call it the barbing and kiss, because if you spend any time barbing him, it sucks the life out of you. Okay. Or else bite him in the ear where the, the elephant can't reach, um, with his trunk. Um, and when the elephant waxes faint, he fall down on the serpent, being now full of blood, um, their uh, bloods now mingle together and congeal and form that which the apothecaries call dragon's blood. So there you go, like dragon's blood, cinnabar comes from a drunk elephant getting in a fight with a dragon. <laughs> but I think this is amazing, you know, it's, it's a wonderful way of looking at the world. And, and wouldn't it be great if this is how undergrad labs work? <laughs> Can you imagine, like, you're going into your third year in organic lab, and you walk in, and uh, Mari Lowe, himself a cross between like Elton John and Sean Connery. <laughs> Or even better, maybe Mike Shaver himself across between uh, Celine Dion and Littlefinger. <laughs> A snow leopard. Uh, okay, I can do this, right. First of all, let's take a pig and picks with a cloud and we get a sheep. Pig, cloud, sheep, right. It's falling, okay. Right, sheep and moss makes a goat, right? So goats are all the big, you know, it's like a mountain sheep thing, right? Yeah? We're after a snow leopard. So let's take our goat and we'll attach it to a cat. And we get a, a llama shit. <laughs> and that's me, thank you. Yeah.